This is Game Chat Aboard, episode 126, The Culling of Overwatch's Toxic T. Yes. You found Game Chat with Buona. Welcome to the show. Now here's your host, Buona McCall, with all the gaming news of this week. Uh, by the way, that's me. Greetings, folks, and welcome to Game Chat with Buona, episode 126. I'm glad you could stop by today. Uh, hope to have a good show today. I'm having a lot of sinus issues, so there may be a lot of cuts, maybe a lot of coughs. But I'll try to make sure I don't blind you with my coughs, even though the sound goes through your ears. I don't know how in the world that will affect your eyes. But anyway, Game Chat one episode 126. Uh, we're going to talk about four stories today. Keep the show a little bit normal <clears throat> in terms of uh, length. Um, some juicy topics this, this week. I think uh, it's going to be some good topics to talk about, uh, not only from the the stories that they're about but it's like they also cover some of the underlining issues with gaming today and a lot of companies and what they're going through so i think there's going to be a good discussion and i hope you all enjoying the show we are on spotify we're on everything now itunes spotify uh we're on google play and uh, also your good old-fashioned rss feed that you can put into your podcatcher all right guys enjoy the show let's do it And for our first story, we're going to talk about Fortnite. Fortnite has earned $1 billion from in-game purchases alone. The story comes from GameIndustry.biz. It's crazy. This is a free-to-play Battle Royale version of Fortnite that they're talking about. Uh, $1 billion. $1 billion. Now, a free-to-play game from in-game cosmetics alone. This is market research firm Superdata, which I've talked about in previous episodes. Um... And that Fortnite and Battle Royale games in general that include this figure as well as non-visuals, some other stuff I'm reading that I shouldn't be reading. But they noted that the Battle Royale game in general is by far the most popular genre for gaming across all platforms. So that's an important piece of data in all of this is that, hey, we're talking about the most popular free-to-play game out there. And um, just how much in-game purchases are, are affecting it. If you've never seen Fortnite... What they offer are skins, dances, uh, alternative uh, gliders, glider effects, uh, sprays, little things like that, which generally don't affect gameplay. And this this craze, you know, started. I don't know if it started, but it was a big, big deal in Eastern games where uh, where pay to win <laughs> was a big, big deal. A lot of uh, Korean based MMOs, they had a heavily, heavily microtransaction based games and that came over to the west I, I i first remember it being big with team fortress 2 with with valve crates and skins and stuff like that that's when everybody went nuts and then they caught on the counter strike and then gambling and then boom you know we're here um but it wasn't always in gaming a lot of the things that we've earned in games in the past uh were these things and you know we play the game and earn an alternative skin i remember playing games where you would have to finish the game on the hardest difficulty to uh, to get the, a new skin, to get a new skin variant. I mean, with Street Fighter 2, you just got a different color palette, and it was a big deal. Uh, uh, and it was amazing, but uh, you played the game to get that. Slowly, we're returning back to that. I think game companies are starting to realize that we're getting a little bit fatigued with this, uh, this wallet-based cosmetic stuff, especially on games that we already buy. I mean, that's like a double dip type of thing that we don't generally like as gamers. But the Battle Royale genre is so popular. The Battle Royale genre is filled with younger audiences that have allowances or have mom and dad's credit card or, you know, earn their money. However, they do it. Uh, Not allowances. They may have a job. You know, they may go out and cut some grass like I did to buy that favorite Nintendo game I wanted. Maybe they're buying Fortnite skins or battle passes as a result. But good grief, guys. One billion dollars. Is just insane. Check it out. Gameindustry.biz has the article. Fortnite, $1 billion from in-game purchases alone. And for our next story, we'll talk about Overwatch. And Overwatch just released a new feature a few weeks ago, which offers re- endorsements uh, to players if they provide you know, good intel during a match or they're a good team player. 
And uh, it shows a, a, a very, very visible indicator of just how many um, just how many endorsements you've received. And uh, like if you if you end the match, it shows your teammates. You can say this person's a good shot caller. They're a good team player and so on and so forth. And the more you get of those, uh, the higher your ranking is. And it shows a little number next to your name. So so Overwatch and it goes the guys over at Blizzard. I may have said Valve earlier. I, I don't know. My brain is a little tipsy. <laughs> anyway. Um, the guys over at Blizzard, they uh, they they put this in to combat toxicity in competitive games these days because it's, it's a growing problem. Uh, I think a lot of people realize they're toxic, but they just can't control it for some reason. They get into the competitive nature of the game. Uh, they're probably not even used to having that kind of self-control because of social issues or whatever. They don't get out and talk to other people, so they never had to refrain from calling somebody a, a, a name or some sort of a really toxic vitriol term that they don't think is harmful because they go, I didn't mean to say it or I didn't really mean what that word meant. But that's not that's not an excuse. I learned that as a child that you got to be careful what you say because your words do have power and you can't just go around just calling people things and say you don't mean it afterwards because you actually did that. You actually said that. So I think people are starting to learn through bands and whatever that this is becoming a serious topic for gaming companies. Um, I know the guys over at uh, the Rainbow Six Siege people, Ubisoft, they've been banning people for, for saying this stuff. They've just been outright banning them. Not even, no questions asked. So Overwatch has tried that. They've tried a, a much more heavy-handed approach, and it worked a little bit. But they're happy to report, according to this post on their forums, that they just finished parsing some stats as it relates to LFG and endorsements, I'll talk about LFG in a bit. <clears throat> the percent of competitive matches that contain abusive chat is down 27% in the Americas and 17% in Korea. That's 25% just from one feature. That's pretty big. The percent of daily players being abusive is down almost 30% in the Americas and 22% in Korea. They said we're really pleased with the community's efforts to make Overwatch a better place. Thank you all. And we're all working on iterating these features to make them better, as well as exploring other systems to improve gameplay environment. So, as again, this is, a, this is one of the reasons why I don't play Overwatch competitive, because I have self-control. You know, I have enough self-control to where I don't, I don't lash out at people. And there's others, though, that, I mean, it got to a point to where it was like every other match, there's always one person that ruins the match. Now you can ignore the person, sure, but they still can do their work. If you ignore them, not everybody else will. And they'll get the job done. They'll make you either lose or they'll make somebody else mad. You'll mute the person that they made mad. And by the end of the day, you're muting everybody. And then they go to the text chat. You have to hide the text chat. The, ra- the match is ruined. At this, at this point, you're just trying to mitigate toxicity. So I'm really happy to see that things like endorsements and LFG are doing this. Now, let's explain what LFG is. LFG is kind of a looking for group thing for Overwatch where you can queue under specific roles. So if you want to be a tank, you want to be a DPS, you want to be a healer or support. I should say support. You can do that. So when you go into a match, there's expectations that, you know, you will fulfill that role and you won't have people squabbling over. Why are you playing DPS? Why are you playing tank? You suck at this. You know, blah, blah, blah. Um, it cuts down on that just a tad. And I know, I think Heroes of Storm was looking into something like this as well. So they're probably going to use the technology that uh, Overwatch is using, because it is all Blizzard, to do the same thing in the MOBA genre. Now, Heroes of the Storm in that genre has done really well cutting down on toxicity. And they're starting to slowly introduce features that can, you know, possibly inflate it, like voice chat and all text chat, which generally what toxic people use to to flame each other. But I'm really happy to see that competitive matches that contain abusive chat and players being abused is down almost 30% across the board. You know, 26%, I'm talking about America's, 26% for chat and almost 30% for, for players being abused. Um, and I guess, you know, people really, really care about that little number next to their name. Um, I know it could be something as simple as that that could really change how a match turns out. So who knows? Maybe we'll return to Overwatch and see how competitive is post LFG and post endorsements to see if the toxicity has really, really gone down. 
I know I've seen some streamers and, you know, my wife plays Overwatch and she tells me that it's, it's helping. Um, and I watch the streamers and they, t- they say the same thing. It's, it's actually cutting down on abusive people. They're starting to check themselves because there's a there's actually a, a pretty good check and balance for it now. It's amazing what consequences can do for actions. You know, when you when you when you do actions and you have no consequence, you know, people go nuts. But all of a sudden there's a consequence or there's something that you could lose or something that is affected. Oh, man. People change their tune. Simple, simple stuff, man. Simple parenting parents. Do you hear this? Discipline your children. Check it out, guys. Over at, at the viewers that forums that blizzard.com. They got the details about Overwatch and how the endorsements and LFG system are really, really helping toxicity in that game. And for our next story, we're going to talk about the culling, namely the culling two. And a new video came out today from the CEO of uh, uh, Xaviant. That's the name of the country or com- company. Sorry, Xaviant. Uh, John Van Velt, and uh, he put out a message essentially talking about the Culling 2 release release last week. Now, if you missed the bandwagon, if you missed the story, the Culling 2 is a Battle Royale game, which is the sequel to the Culling 1. Uh, The Culling 1 came out a few years ago and came out of early access and was met with kind of like a lot of player angst because they released the game without doing a lot of things that the players wanted. And it was to a lot of players' surprise that The Culling 2 was coming out so quickly, even after The Culling 1 wasn't really finished the way it should have been. So today, um, we got a message from the CEO because their last their, their launch last week was pretty bad. Um, the game pretty much was a carbon copy. And I say carbon copy, I'm talking about major features now. A carbon copy of popular Battle, Battle Royale games out there like like uh, PUBG and the like. Now, that on its own is not a big deal because everybody else is doing that too. But the thing about the culling is that their original culling game was so unique and had a lot of differences from those other games. Uh, it was more Hunger Games than a lot of the Battle Royale games were, uh, I think. It was a game show format. Uh, was very popular with streamers. It was very fun. And what happened with the culling one was that they went and made a lot of sweeping changes without getting proper player feedback and essentially changed the game for the worse. And as a result, as you probably guess, population declined. The game pretty much died. So they came out with a culling two and they tried to pretty much carbon copy the games that are out there, abandoning what made the game the culling and that the game was actually in a bad state. It was in a bad state and there was nobody playing it. I mean, I think at one point on Steam stats, it was one player playing. It, it was really bad. And I've never seen Steam reviews call a game what these people call the game. I mean, there was like literally no reason to compliment this game. They gave you every bad reason to. So the video today from the the CEO was a, how long was this thing? I think it was close to 10 minutes. No, it was five minutes, about six minutes. Uh, uh, An apology, basically acknowledging that the, the the culling two was a whopping failure. And that they made a mistake in making it. And they clearly delivered a game that nobody wanted. Um, He also admitted that the mistakes that they made in Culling 1, that they changed the game too quickly. And that they uh, they had the features that nobody wanted. And they made the game something else than what people asked for was a mistake as well. So it was like a lot of apologies in this. Acknowledgement of their uh, their mistakes. And what he said was that they're going to actually put the Culling 1 day one version, which is the one they released in March 2017, on their test servers uh, to kind of retune and to reshape that game into what players actually want. And they're also going to close the doors and close the stores for the Culling 2. So the Culling 2 is going to get removed from Steam, from uh, from Xbox, PS4. They're going to close it down, shut it down, and they're going to get people refunds. So this is a big, big deal. They're going to lose a ton of money. I mean... I, you could you could tell by the look on the CEO's face that this is not the best financial decision, but I think it was a humbling thing for him to do. Um, that he you know he had to really humble himself and and apologize for all this. Now I'll talk about the genuine nature of the video in a bit, but um, and to top it all off, they're going to release the Culling One, re-release it as free to play. So in retrospect and in summary, the Culling Two is getting shut down from Steam. PS4 and Xbox. The Culling One is being reborn on the test servers now and eventually will be released again as a free-to-play title. 
they say they're going to keep it with the original uh, culling features, all the different perks, all the airdrops and everything uh, and so on. So a very, very humbling video and uh, I can applaud the effort. But here's the but. I, I, I'm seeing this as the death of the culling. Um, I really believe that, you know, in general, when a game starts out as buy and goes free to play, certain things are going to change in management. Certain things are going to change in the company. And essentially it's going to shift into like a maintenance mode. Let's make money for somebody who's going to buy us out or some type of thing like that. Whenever a game goes free to play, that's kind of what's happening. It's essentially the game dying and kind of being reborn into this microtransaction filled state. Um, so I look at this as the death of the culling. I really do. Now, people are praising him for, for apologizing because you don't see that a lot. I mean, you don't see a lot of developers and a lot of CEOs coming out apologizing for doing wrong. I am happy he did it, but I'm not impressed because that's what you're supposed to do anyway. I shouldn't be impressed by that. I, I I mean, if you made a mistake, you should apologize. That's 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 pretty much how life is. And the fact that that's a surprise is kind of sad. But yeah, they made a mistake. And yeah, they did, they did all these things wrong. And yeah, they were driven by probably the wrong things, money. And now they're paying for it. So they apologize. I accept their apology. But at the same time, this is not looking good for the culling. I mean, sure, they're going to release it. It's going to come out free to play. There's people out there that's probably going to stick with it. But for all intents and purposes, I think they've lost the trust and they lost the respect of everybody who who will probably accept their apology and say, OK, that was cool of you to do that, but I'm still not going to play your game. And I'm not going to trust you with a free to play title to make the right decisions, even though you say you learned your lesson. There's going to be a lot of people out there that are not just they're just not going to do it. They're not going to trust them. And they're not wrong for that. There's a billion other games out there to play. <laughs> There's too much choice. I mean, these companies have to be careful. You can't make the most minute of mistakes because there's a lot more choice out there. Players are just going to go elsewhere and play something else, especially in the BR genre. The BR genre is getting filled quickly, very quickly. So the culling had their chance and they messed it up. And now they're trying to backpedal and get it back. I don't see it happening. I think the game is essentially dead. Uh, I think it's going to be reborn as a free to play thing. And I don't think it's going to succeed. I want them to succeed. I don't hope they fail. I just don't. I'm realistically looking at it and going, well, that's the end of them. Check it out, guys. Over on Rock Paper Shotgun, they got the details about the culling being relaunched as free to play. I love their headline. The culling 2 is dead. Long live the culling. Check it out, guys. And for our final story, we're going to talk about Warframe. Let's talk about Warframe and from a fellow content provider and Warframe partner, Magamu, put up a great video. And the title is Warframe was already a great game. And I kind of saw this video coming when I saw his tweet. His tweet was reading like, does anybody else, is anybody else getting sick of tired of people calling Warframe or people saying that Warframe is suddenly good? I was like, oh, here comes a video. <laughs> and if you haven't subscribed to Magamu, please do. I'm going to link his video in this. Um, and what he talks about in this video is very true. Now, Warframe's getting a lot of positive press. I think some big YouTubers are picking up on it. Big streamers are picking up on it. And they are praising the game um, for what it is. It's a great game. It has a lot of things. And it's a great free-to-play game. Um, and most notably, it's riding the hype of the Tinocon 2018 announcements about uh, Fortuna and Railjack. Both big features for a free-to-play game. And Magamu makes a great point. It's like these outlets are really, really hyping up the game. They're, they're really jumping on this thing and calling it, you know, and saying that Warframe has gotten good. And I think he makes a great point. Magamu makes a great point when he says that Warframe was already good. It was already a great game. Now, it wasn't perfect. It had a lot of problems, but it was already a great game. I've been playing since 2013 on and off. And I agree wholeheartedly. I streamed the game. To, you know, the tune of 40 to 50 people every night talking about how great a game it was, you know, you know, being honest about its shortcomings, about the new player experience and all the different systems. But at its heart, it's a really good game. Probably one of <clears throat> one of the best, one of the best free to play games out there. 
you know, and we compare it to the path of exile. You know, we, we go head to head in discussions on my live streams. But it's, it's been a good game for years. And I've been trying to get people to play it. I've been begging people to play it. And they give you excuses. It's not for me. I, I don't think I'll like it. And rightfully so. I, I just say, okay, you know, it's not a big deal. But now a lot of these same people are coming back going, oh, it's gotten so good. But the things that they're appraising, the things that they're that they're really complimenting have been there for three plus years. So all these things were there before, but they just didn't like them. And I, I completely agree with that. I completely agree. Now, a lot of it has to do with hype trains, and you know, where trends are going. You know, some of the streamers and content providers may be genuine, but I think a lot of people are what I like to call. They're just riding the bandwagon. The views are there. The clicks are there. People are not talking about Destiny anymore. They're talking about Warframe. So let me get on that train. Let me say, oh, the game is great now so I can get people to click on it. There's a lot of people doing that. And Magamo ends with a, a very, very valid point, and I agree with it as well. Talks about how, as a result of this, with the media and these, these YouTube providers and Twitchers, they're beginning to overhype the game. They're really beginning to overhype the game, putting it in the same category that they did with Destiny, because they put Destiny on this really, really high pedestal to be in a perfect game, to do everything perfectly right, perfectly. And it ended up falling short of that, you know, and the danger of setting really high expectations is that you're not going to meet them. And when you're not, when you don't meet them, people are going to get mad and they're going to say the game fails or the game sucks. Um, so it, it's really, really disheartening to see that this trend is happening. And I agree it is going to happen if they keep this up. So I think it's really important for these new content providers and people and YouTubers and Twitch people you know, to say, hey, I was just late to the I was just late to the game and acknowledge that the game is great as is. And it didn't just happen overnight, because, again, the only things that were new in this past, you know, a few months that is getting hyped was the sacrifice trailer, which some people don't even believe is the best um, or a sacrifice quest, which some people don't even believe is the best quest in the game. I mean, we've had these cinematic quests for going on three years now, right? Second Dream was what, 2013, 2014, something like that. Maybe even uh, further than that, 2015 probably. Yeah, three years is 2015. So Second Dream, War Within, and now The Sacrifice, three years of cinematic quests, and you're just getting on it now. You've had three years. So I absolutely positively agree with Magamu. And I'm not being like a hipster vet or anything, but he makes a great point, and it is absolutely true the game was good before it had its problems. Again, this is not a perfect game. It had its problems, but good grief. It wasn't a great game. And the game we're playing today, a lot of it is the same game that was there three day, three years ago. I mean, some systems have been retooled and re overhauled and changed, but the core game is still there. So check this, check out this video. It's about a seven minute video. Very, very well edited. <laughs> Uh, Magamu has a great sense of humor. You're going to like his style. And you'll see that Warframe, hopefully you'll see that Warframe was always a good game. And I think a lot of the hype is just people late to the party. And it's okay to be late to the party. They shouldn't feel bad for being late to the party. But we, when I say we, I'm talking about content providers and fellow Twitch broadcasters would go into their streams, the same people that are hyping it today, and beg them to play the game. You should try Warframe. They'd be playing Destiny. And they'd be hating it. I'm like, well, probably you should try Warframe. It's a great game. It has a lot of similar grinding elements that you may like. It has some, you know, some crafting differences. It has some movement mechanics, but you may like it because there's a little bit of similarity between this and Warframe. Nah, Warframe's not for me. I heard it was pay to win. I heard this and that, that. You know, I you can only do so much to try to convince people to try the game and then now that the game's getting all this hype, their dev streams are getting 100,000 views. Oh, now you want to play Warframe. Oh, now you think it's the best game. So check this check this story out, guys. Mogamu makes a great point. I absolutely agree. It's getting ridiculous how many people are jumping on this bandwagon and how many people are hyping it up. If you're looking at Warframe as a potential game, I humbly ask you to go to the Warframe partner list, the Warframe partners on uh, Warframe.com and browse through those youtubers there and watch their videos if you go to somebody who's not a partner you might get some overhype <laughs> because a lot of the partners and we go through i mean and the partners process at, at digital extremes is pretty strenuous 
if you're a partner, you probably know what you're talking about and you probably have a good handle on where the game has been and where it is now. You'll get a down to earth opinion. I'm not even telling you to go to my YouTube because I only have like six or six or seven Warframe videos. Magamo's a good source. There's a <coughs> there's a bunch of other people, but you can you can take your pick and find a good content provider if you're on the edge about checking out Warframe because there's a lot of hype and a lot of false hype and contrived hype. Don't fall for it. Warframe has its issues. Don't set the expectation super high for a free to play game. Okay. Check it out, guys. Warframe was already a great game. Magamo does a great job of bringing out this good point. Thank you, Magamo. <laughs> Thank you. And that concludes Game Chat with one episode 126. I got through it without coughing too much. These allergies are killing me, chat. And you're not chat. I mean, killing me, audience. What do I call you guys? You're, you're, a, you're, this is a delay. This is a, a portable on demand cast, as we called it back in the day. A podcast. This is delayed. What do I call you? I can't call you chat because chat is my loving name for my community on my live stream. I'll just call you, uh, I'll call you Tommy. Thanks for coming by, Tommy. Great, great, <laughs> great show. 126 episode. Uh, we're going to be publishing this on our site. Please, please follow us. Follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash Bona. That's my main social media. I also am on Instagram. I posted a user story there. Instagram, <clears throat> excuse me, dot com slash Buona. I recently posted. Oh, I didn't talk about my switch. Oh, gosh. I posted a user story there on my adventures of picking up a switch. You guys can check that out. I'm not going to talk about it here because we're closing out. Um, but yeah, I got a switch. My community bought me a switch. It's been really, really fun. Also, we're on Spotify. Finally, I keep saying that because it took forever. Uh, also follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Buona. Broadcast every day except Wednesdays and Sundays in the morning and in the night at night. I have a pinned post on my Twitter page at twitter.com slash Buona with the schedule all in the Eastern time. Two four-hour blocks, so hopefully you can catch one of them. Come by, follow the stream. It would be great if you could do that. YouTube.com slash Buona where I post this content as well as highlights of my live stream and I occasionally create other content as well. Still looking for a topic. I was doing Elite Dangerous stuff, but that kind of died off. So I might talk about the Switch, man. I'm, I'm getting into the Switch. I might give some initial thoughts about the Switch and do some videos and reviews of the hardware and stuff. So that might be a good topic as well. So thank you so much for watching, guys. And you're not watching anything probably right now, unless you're on YouTube. But thank you for listening. I've been doing too many live streams. This is, this is, this is, this is, this is evidence. I've been doing too many live streams. Thank you all for listening. Thank you so much. Everybody have a great day, and I will see you all next time. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching the video. Please comment, like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And make sure you click the bell to be notified. Otherwise, you ain't going to see this video. Wait, how did you see this video? Um, okay. Bye. <laughs>